Good morning, man. Thank you for awakening the dawn with me. We talked a little bit yesterday about the 1904 Welsh Revival. J. Edwin War had a lot to say about that. I'm quoting him here. As the revival swept Wales, drunkenness was cut in half. There was a wave of bankruptcies, but nearly all taverns, there was even a slowdown in the mines. You say, how could a religious revival cause a strike? It did not cause a strike, just a slowdown for so many Welsh coal miners were converted and stopped using bad language that horses that dragged the trucks in the mines could not understand what was being said to them. Hence, transportation slowed down for a while until they learned the language of Canaan. That revival also affected sexual moral standards. I had discovered through the figures given by British government experts that in some of these places, the actual illegitimate birth rate had dropped 44% within a year of the beginning of the revival. Men, our prayers and revival can change us, the church, and this culture. So this is what we're praying for. We're praying for societal transformation that comes from souls being saved, being delivered, being set free to live holy lives. Our prayers will do this. Our scripture reading for today is 1 Thessalonians chapters 1 through 3. Verse 5 of chapter 1 says, Because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and deep conviction, you know how we lived among you for your sake. What we need in our churches today is power from the Holy Spirit and deep conviction, a return of the fear of the Lord. Also reading from chapter 2, beginning in verse 13. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. For you, brothers, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For you suffered the same things from our own countrymen as they did from the Jews who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out and displeased God and opposed all mankind by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles that they might be saved so as always to fill up the measure of their sins. But wrath has come upon them at last. Let's pray. Lord God, I need the power of your Holy Spirit in my life, the power that comes from deep conviction. Lord, I want to be thanking you constantly. I need to hear your word, not just the words of men. Lord, I pray that you would prepare me, that you would prepare us for the coming suffering and persecution from government forces and from our evil culture. Give us boldness to proclaim your word and your righteousness. In your time, let your wrath come upon those who oppose and hinder your good news of your kingdom. Dispel lies and deception in the U.S. Capitol during this impeachment trial. Psalm 57 says, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They set a net for my steps. My soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my way, but they have fallen into it themselves. Lord, make us faithful witness for your kingdom. Let me be, let us be, able to say what Paul said to his converts in Thessalonica. For you are our glory and our joy. Do this, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, men, for joining me. God bless you today.